Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Hello everybody and welcome back to the international group stage day number two. We're right in the middle of the day with Execration versus Newbie, myself, Capitalist, and Draskal, Austin and Andy, A &A. the double A clue. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, personally. Yeah. I saw someone tweet it. At us yesterday saying it was the he gave the A and A a triple A or something like that. Nice. It was a bit cheesy, but you know, <laughs> you you gotta respect that. Wait, wait, wait. Do you have a middle name? Lee. Damn it. Why couldn't it be start with an A? I don't know, dude. That we could be, be a triple A cast. We could literally be a triple A yeah, cast. Yeah, my full name is Andrew Lee Styles. Austin Lanewall. Yeah, nice they but they both start with an L. That's true. Yeah. The dream. Wow. All right, newbie versus execration. Now, if you're going into this this series and you haven't watched much execration, you probably don't know much about the score. You're like, ah, he's a bunch of noobs. They're just gonna get rolled over by one of the best Chinese teams. But actually, execration haven't done terrible for themselves. Uh, they've lost one series, but they've actually tied two others. One of which was actually against uh, probably one of uh, more of the favorites of the tournament, Virtus Pro. So that pretty impressive. I actually didn't get to see that game, but. It looked like they kind of won off the the back of uh, very cancerous Pugna, Bristleback, Venomancer lineup of some sorts. And uh, we're just able to end it before VP's lineup really came online. Uh, the other game that they won against Hellraisers uh, was all James. James just destroyed the game. And then in their second, second game of that series against Hellraisers, James was the big bird. Yeah, I think it's... A lot to do with the teams who haven't had a ton of experience in international tournaments like Execration. They've been to a few lands, but the more experience they get, you don't know how nervous they're feeling. You know, the communication amongst the team, there's not really a whole lot of knowledge of the inner workings. So I think as time goes on and they have like more lands and more lands, you're just going to see a bit more consistency out of these the, the teams coming from, you know, South America and, and all over the world who might not have had a more developed Dota scene before. Yep. But, you know, it's getting there. And obviously we talked about the 11 majors and minors that was released a couple of days ago as well. And that's going to help, you know, grow the scene and, and let these teams get more spotlight. So the fact that they're able to take games off of some of the more impressive teams throughout the entire world is, is still something I think to look forward to if you're a South American Dota fan. So yep. that being said, Execration do have a very, very hard task in front of them. Newbie is no slouch. No, they uh, they certainly aren't. After all, they've got Faith on their team. They've got a world-class offlaner, in my opinion, in KP. Uh, SCCC, -C -C -C, he's been... Uh, well, when he first started off in Newbie, he looked super good. And I, I think he's had a little bit of... Uh, a couple of rough performances since then, but I would still say he's probably in the top... Uh, maybe top five mids in the world right now. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't rate him quite at that Sumail no one level, but uh, he's just kind of like a small step below that. I mean, I don't think there's much shame in saying you're a little bit worse than Sumail. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. He's probably like maybe the best player in the world right now. So it's uh, it's no shame in that whatsoever. And after all, the Dota, Dota right now is not really that, uh, I mean, there is definitely an individual talent element, but a lot more of it is going to come down to your strategy and your teamwork. I'm watching some of these teams, and, and uh, for example, LGD. I'm watching LGD a little bit, and it seems like like what really shines for me from them is that they're able to play around each other very well, specifically around maybe. And, and that seems far more important than just individual talent and being able to win your life. Now, the longer that Dota continues to develop, the more it's about what your game plan is, how well you communicate, what steps you take to reach your your team's goal you know we used to call it win conditions and like all these generic terms but there's a lot of things that go on that need to go right for certain drafts so getting to this one it's been a little bit slow in the second ban phase but we do have the the rubik lifesteal opening here from execration and, and sand king dazzle i'd say these are i would probably look at newbie and say theirs is a bit more ambiguous more flexibility in the heroes. You know, Sand King can fulfill multiple roles, whereas Dazzle is normally seen to support. Execration show a core relatively early, but they've also banned out a lot of stuff that is annoying for the hero. Yeah. So, for example, Ice Armor is not fun to play against. Veno is great if you land Gale prior to Rage. Track speed, um, 
playing against that can definitely be a nightmare. And, and Sven is one of the heroes that just offers a tremendous amount of armor to anyone on his team. So they're, they're kind of setting him up for success. And they've now got a vehicle for the Life Stealer Infest in the Puck. Um, and kind of feels pretty good against Sand King Dazzle, right? Being able to have that silence and lockdown against both of those heroes, whether they're support or if this is offlane Sand King. It seems like the Puck will be very good for this. It, it, Execration don't really seem too shy about revealing their strategy early here. Uh, like most of the other teams we've watched, like for example, EG, I was watching some of their games. The ambiguity in their draft is amazing because they can run, say, Enchantress, three or four position. You've got Earthshaker that can run two, three, four, and five position all on that team. You know, like there was a lot of ambiguity in their draft most of the time. They're hiding their strategy till the, the absolute end, even sometimes right into who's playing what. But here, Execration, uh, it feels like to me more comfort for them. I do feel like this is a team that likes to be kind of up in your face and, and fighting. They don't necessarily want to go super late game, nor do they want to go all in on a push strategy or anything. They're very much more of a mid game fighting style. I think it is just very conducive to how the, the Southeast Asian region plays Dota. They, they just like to be active. Mm -hmm. They don't like to sit and, and do these kind of safe lanes or the two one twos and stuff like that. You know, maybe they'll do those, but more often than not, you're going to see them break the laning phase really quickly and, and try to go for kills, apply pressure. And to be honest, they've been doing that for a very long time, not just execration, you know, like old Fnatic before they had their new roster, they played a very similar style as well. You look back at uh, MVP teams from that region just seem to have a tendency to like to fight a lot. Mm -hmm. And in this meta, especially, I do think that a lot of the time fighting is valuable, even if you're not always getting objectives because just the more pressure you can apply earlier in the game, I think that teams that can do that and hold on to it usually just win. Yeah. But the thing is difficult is breaking the tier three. You know, that, that seems to be where that kind of strategy falls flat and why people kind of have deviated from that since then. But Execration not looking to back off here and being aggressive at all, picking up a Tusk. So it, it looks to be a, a Tusk Rubik support pairing, not something that we typically see. And this is also going to be picked up before we even see what newbie is going to be putting mid. So I guess my my primary concern for that would be it's a low damage support duo. Yeah. Pretty hard to execute in and ganking. You know, Rubik's probably just going to be sitting top, and the Tusk is going to be the one moving around. If that's the case, they can give S Triple C something that can just live through the gank. And that hero that, will definitely live through the gank. That hero is going to be very hard to kill. I mean, it's a classic mashup too, right? Dragonite versus the Puck is very favorable for the Dragonite. He's got this uh, damage reduction and Breathe Fire, very hard to dodge, very unlikely to be able to get the face shift up before you get hit by the Breathe Fire. Later on, you have an instant range stun when you pop your Dragon form. Uh, some Dragonites even like to be able to go Shadow Blade versus the Puck. Uh, and they also have the Earthshaker versus the Puck, which we've seen kind of go back and forth. Um, but I would say primarily the Earthshaker prefers that matchup a yeah, little bit definitely. more because you have an instant stun against a, a squishy, uh, very mobile hero. It's a huge pain to play Puck into Earthshaker, especially post blink. Yeah. Even if the Earthshaker has good positioning, you can randomly throw out fissures. That makes it pretty frustrating. If you're not paying attention, you know, you, you waste your phase shift or something, or you get fissured in the middle of an orb and you can't jaunt. Like, th those those feel pretty bad. Uh, DK stun obviously isn't instant anymore when you're in ultimate form, but if you get a blink dagger, which we've seen pretty commonly, it's either the blink or the shadow blade at some point in item progression, you also have another avenue of getting in. Sand King stun is also instant. It's not really the easiest puck game, but I think what Execration wanted to do was like you mentioned, give the Life Stealer that vessel to be able to get into the fights. Right. So if they catch the back hero, they catch like the Dazzle, they catch a Urshaker or a Sand King, you can, you can pop that hero relatively fast. Whenever I look at these lineups, it's it's like um, you can be countered by picks, but execution is more important, right? right. Like, no matter what, even if you have all the heroes in the world to be able to, to kill the puck and that sort of thing, like if you are able to make the initiation for the Life Stealer, it doesn't matter if they have the counter initiation. It doesn't matter if they have some sometimes a little bit tankier heroes. You can still win fights as long as you execute better than your enemy. I think that's the kind of style that Execration just likes. Yeah. They they enjoy the outplay. You know, it's it's always those types of pub games are just very high individual skill. Maybe not the best in the the way of teamwork, but over time that just improves. The the longer you stay together and the, the more games that you play. So last pick up here. 
It's going to be a, a pretty standard counter pick to just Life Stealer in general. Ursa just destroys that hero. Again, a lot of it's going to come down to how the fights roll out. I would say on paper, what newbie have is probably a bit easier to play. They have a, a pretty simple game plan. You have two heroes that are going to buy Blink. They're both Initiators and the Shaker and the Sand King. Ursa will probably eventually get his own Blink, so you have kind of this train of double stun into an Ursa beating you down, and then you have the DK for push and ultimately the Dazzle for sustain. The last pick, Enigma for the Raging Potato. I like this quite a bit. There's no real lockdown for the Enigma post BKB unless someone has yeah. an Abyssal Blade. And even then, it's going to be relatively hard. The one, I guess, problem is the lineup becomes a lot slower when you pick Enigma. And yeah. if you're waiting for that hero to get to the critical mass to be able to win you the game, it takes time. Yeah. But you can at least say that Execration, like, they can play a lot of 4 versus 5, right? Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily need, because we have such an aggressive lineup between Puck and Lifestealer, which is super aggressive cores, and I would say Tusk and Rubik aren't really any, any like, they don't really need farm. Right, they're more based on levels. So I, I kind of feel like it was a, maybe a little bit of oversight by Newbie to, uh, to not ban away that Enigma simply because they don't have a stun to go through the BKB. And that's probably one of the... Like whenever I'm looking at picking an Enigma, I'm just looking at it post BKB, right? Yeah, I yeah, exactly. I don't care about anything else. I don't really care about instant stuns. I don't care about any of that because you're naturally going to get the farm for the Enigma to get Blink BKB. It just happens because you get Midas, you get to level 10, level 15. Those are important talent levels for the Enigma. You're going to get to that point. So all these instant stuns and like, you know, KP's Earthshaker and Kaka's Sand King, like they won't really matter too much to you just because, you know, you'll be able to hit that, that big, you know, Talking about wind condition, I guess. Uh, real quickly, I do want to go over kind of who these players are, uh, simply because I know if you've watched Execration in the past, you may be looking at these names. Wait, what the hell? Yeah. Like, uh, that's not the names I recognize. So James usually goes by Cartman, for example. Um, Kimo is uh, Lumic. Lumic. Support player Lumic. There he is. Uh, and I think that's it. Yeah, I think, think the, uh, the rest are Raging Potatoes, Raging Potatoes, he goes with many names. I'm why would gonna, he ever, go why would he ever change his name, though? I know, I know. Raging Potato, like, he's got, like, five different names that he's gone by in the past. But this one is by far my favorite. Yeah, and then, I mean, even on Ubisoft, side, they have name changes as well. Moogie uh, used to be U9. Yeah, U9. Changed it up. Apparently, his name was associated with a, a company, and that's why he Yeah, he there, was a, there was a website, uu9.cn or whatever. Oh, okay. Because I remember Jack uh, Jack telling me about that, and I was, like, totally confused because I don't know anything about that. But Newbie looking like they're going for the advantageous laning phase. They are going to smoke up. They do have a pretty decent kill potential at level 1. Sand King stun's pretty, pretty good. Uh, looks like for now they're just going to be placing some wards. The one thing that I can see Newbie struggling with is not just about the, the post-BKB Enigma, but punishing the Enigma in general. Because Dazzle is not really known for his aggressive potential. It's going to be the, the KP Shaker, obviously. But how do they stop him from getting farm? is my question. Look at this. Kaka is actually going to hit him from the trees. Nice setup there. They're going to be able to get the slow onto Nando. He's going to have to pop the Rage. Kaka is trying to get in front of him to get a body block in, but not going to be able to do so. They do manage to snatch away that Banu Rune, but fail to be able to get the first blood. It seems like everybody is doing this now. This has now become the standard to smoke and invade. You already had an execration set up for an invasion um, up here in the top lane. They didn't really try and hide it too much. It seems like that's what's, uh, that's currently the matter. Everyone likes to be able to do that. I think it's becoming more and more about just how you want to lane. So you have these two supports and bottom, and you can still pull. Like, you can pull your own creeps. You have a Dazzle. He's really good at killing the camp. I think it's maybe one thing that people kind of underestimate is how fast the hero can get farm in the early game and just get to like one decent item. And then you're kind of making the other team say, hey, I'm either going to try to win mid, which even in a 2v1, S triple C is probably going to be fine. Right. And then top lane, it's, it's you know, Enigma versus the Earthshaker. So you're saying you're either pulling other heroes to come win this try lane or we're just going to completely, you know, shut down whatever hero is down here. I'm kind of curious what this... Why isn't Reaching Potato left to go bottom yet, since Nando's now here? Because well, he they, uh, they don't want the Life Stealer versus Ursa. Yeah, obviously not. It's really bad for him. They've already rotated the other support up too, so Faith 
is now turned into a 2-1-2. There's Raging Potato. He's out of there. Man, he was reluctant to head down to that bottom He's lane. like, I'm getting so many creeps. Why would you make me leave? Actually, he didn't get any. He just denied a bunch. Yeah. So I guess he was just sitting there, like, denying, helping control the lane a bit, and then... Yeah, because he's double wave now top. Meanwhile, in mid lane, we actually had the Tusk Hayna hanging around to try to threaten SEC as much as possible, but uh, eventually you have to leave. That's just a, a lane that Dragon Knight is going to survive in. Right you now, actually. The, puck has the advantage, but not. You, you cannot push this hero out of lane. Like, as Puck, you have to pretty much land every single orb. And even when you do that, all it takes is, you know, SCCC getting to his bottle and picking up one room, and all your work is undone. Yeah. It's very, very tough. Fortunately, it's not like James has to crush his lane. He just needs to make sure that he gets six at a relatively good timing. And then once they start moving around the map, creating space for the, the life stealer and or I guess the Enigma too, just because of how integral Raging Potato is going to be to this lineup. He's got a lot uh, to think about when he does hit that level six and where he wants to go ganking, right? Because both the Ursa and Earthshaker, I would say, have very high priority on your list of heroes to gain. You want to keep that Earthshaker away from his Link Tanker as fast as possible, especially since it threatens you, the Puck, most. And uh, then the Ursa, you're just a great hero to be able to kite the Ursa around quite a bit, and it's definitely a snowballing hero that can suffer if it has Courier? a bad laning oh. oh, no. Gets him. Nice pickup by Jane. Yeah, the double null. I don't think he would have one-shot it. He also didn't have the Breathe Fire debuff. So yeah, one one hit, one courier. It's a really good thing for Execration here. But yeah, the, the choice of who to gank is always kind of tricky because you need to think about what hero is going to do the most amount of damage to what you're trying to accomplish, right? And sometimes it could be the Ursa because the Ursa is good against your life stealer. But in this case, I think SCCC is the hardest hero to kill, but I also think in a way it's either him or it's KP. You delay the Blink Dagger on the Shaker that gives your Puck a good game. You kill the DK, you stop the push. Because that's the only hero who really hits buildings on a newbie. They're, they're more looking for like stable lanes. and Once they get levels, yeah, they'll be able to do their 5-man Dota. But the DK and... Oh, first oh, blood. Oh, managed to pick up RR in the bottom lane. The Rubik ends up going down. Looks like chased down by Kaka and Mugi. And they're going to try and catch Raging Potato too. They do manage to slow him down. He gets the Eidolons in front of Mugi. Nice body blocking there from Raging Potato. Looks like they're still going to be able to make a dive underneath the tower. R tries to go over the body block, but he didn't have Telekinesis up. Now he has it, but uh, he's just going to have to turn and fight Mugi as best as possible because he's definitely dead here. He just hopes to be able to get the kill in return. He does, but doesn't manage to stay alive to be there for it. Ends up getting taken later on. Meanwhile, top lane, they actually managed to get Lumic. Faith barely survived through that one, but does manage to get the kill. Surprising that he ends up dying in that lane. Like, Dazzle Shaker doesn't really seem like the type of lane with, like, super high kill potential. Yeah. And I guess there is a point in the Poison Touch, though. So Faith uh, opting to skip the Shallow Grave for now. Yeah, maybe he just misjudged it, thought he could actually kill Faith rather than the other way around. Faith will end up dying here. Fernando, good wrap around there. Well, so far, I, I gotta say, like, James is doing a really solid job. You know, normally in this matchup, if you can dodge the Breathe Fires, like, consistently, you should be able to still farm. But sometimes it's tough. You know, the, the, the AoE is pretty decent, and the animation itself is relatively fast. So if, if you're on your A game, looks like you can still do pretty well. Yeah, he's keeping SCC low enough. He's gonna have to burn the invis and the bottle charges now. Even a TP from the Dazzle to refill that bottle even more and give us a heal. Stodge on the Poison Touch. We now have the Soul Ring for KP. That certainly helps out quite a lot in your laning phase when you're facing up against the Trine lane, just being able to spam out Fisher for CS. And he does have quite a large stack here that he might be able to take some part in, though I'm sure Execration are going to put a, some pressure on it. Might be a good opportunity for James to rotate up with the Shaker and help take the stack. They could probably do it, although a lot of the time when you're Puck, you really want your second spell level 2. Like the Waning Rift deals a good amount of damage. So maybe if you get like the one or two extra points, you could be in trouble though, Dan. Face in, face shift. Oh, Ooh. Kaka tries to hit him before the jump to the orb, but uh, our Puck is able to make it away. Meanwhile, top lane, R is in place to be able to go on KP here. Now, he is a tanky son of a gun, but that's the thing. Life Stealer is so good against the uh, Shaker for that reason. You are actually one of the force that can cut him down to size. Fortunately, only having one stun means that Earthshaker can always just TP back to tower. I'm really happy to see that KP just TPs the tower. He doesn't, you know, TP back to base. Sometimes, in the moment, you know, you do that. Boogie? Well, on to Boogie. 
He's going to have to turn, fight, but he knows he's dead, so he ends up going down. In the meantime, though, SEC sees the opportunity. The puck's gone, put pressure on mid, but James is already back. He walked to bottom lane and is able to TP back already. SEC is going to be caught by the snowball, and uh, looks like he didn't have enough mana, nor the cooldown for the ice shards. As it now, thanks to his wand, is going to be able to lock Faith in, but James doesn't feel comfortable sticking around here, not against an Ursa. Faith is able to survive thanks to the Shallow Grave. And Mookie gets revenge against James. Very heavy commitment there. It's very dangerous to do those kind of aggressive orbs and jaunt forward when you don't have any vision of the enemy high ground. Yeah. Like, sure, uh, Lumic walked up the hill, but it's a tusk, and he's only level 3, so he's not really offering that much damage. They should have probably anticipated a grave, but just overextending a bit. Trouble, though, here. Snowball will buy him some time. He went over to neutral, so he'll get some distance away from that Ursa. I think he'll be fine. It'll take a while for Boogie to chase him down if you really try. So, the first rotation from our puck was to put pressure on the Earth. So, we'll see where his second one comes in. As he does have the Dream Coil coming off cooldown and a TP up in 15 seconds. I I'm kind of feeling like I was looking at this matchup, and I feel like two of the standout players, the big playmakers for both teams, are actually the offlaners, right? KP yeah. is oftentimes the one who is making a lot of plays for newbie, creating space, etc. Um, he can have some rough games but that's, I think, just the offlane in general. Um, and Raging Potato, I think, is an is a excellent player for Execration. I think he's one of their best. I absolutely agree. Like, for a long time, Raging Potato's kind of been that player who you look at and you just think, this guy, he can play a ton of different stuff. Always high impact. Kaka, gonna be chased down here. James is gonna be able to pick up that one with the orb. KP, actually gonna TP back. I guess not feeling where he's sitting at. Net worth wise, we're sitting. Dragonite is top of the board, but he's been just kind of calmly sitting mid and farming the whole entire time. Puck is still keeping pace despite all the rotations, uh, sitting at just 100 gold below him. The great thing for Execration is that their two cores, both Enigma and Lifestealer, are both sitting there above the 3k line, while the Ursa is not quite there. So, the landing phase has really gone well for Execration despite the kill lead uh, being slightly in the favor of the newbie and even the gold very slightly at. This is one of the worries I feel when you have just so little pushing power. Like, even with S triple C, he's going to be forced to pop the haste here in the middle lane. They just need to get the tier ones down, I think, a tiny bit faster. The more time, the next creation has better. And just get him with the coil here. Of course, he still has the haste run for a little while. Looks like that stun wasn't long enough to get Raging Potato there for the Black level 7. So that would have been a nice rotation. Way to catch SCC. Ooh, he actually threw his stun onto Eidolon. That's not what he wanted. Kaka's going to be coming in. Looks like James is going to make this commitment here. See if they have the physical damage, but the heal comes out from Faith. That's not going to be good enough. So Kaka will go over to him as he chases down. Raging Potato does have a burrow strike up in two seconds. He's going to have to go in deep for the tower. Has Malphus on him as well. It's not quite enough damage thanks to the rain drops, and it looks like he might be able to get away. He turns, right clicks Kaka, knows he's going to die to this one, but at least he'll ensure the death on Sanking, or not. Barely outside the range of the tower. Oh, the rain drop. Does does block that ice shard, but it's not going to block the snowball and the right click that allows Lumik to be able to take the kill. Still super worth it for Kaka. I'm also pretty sure he spent a little bit of his money before he died, so not losing out on too much there. Keeping himself alive, forcing reactions, getting a really, really big so Good stuff coming out so far here from Yubi, and that's the kind of pace they need to keep up. Is this oh, James that is a long enough stun that he wasn't able to jump oh. to his orb. He's in trouble, SEC. He has got 335 movement speed, five more on the puck, but he's got breathe fire and he didn't have the quick reactions to be able to stop it, so. That is a really hard spell to phase shift. Yeah. It's not, is... it's not instant, but it might as well be. It's, it's just, you have to know it's coming. Yeah, you have to somehow, like, it's not a quick reaction sort of thing, right? It's a, a general read of, he's going to breathe fire now. Yeah, it's it's definitely tricky, but I've seen that, like, a handful of times out of James so far, like, the orb, it's not, it's either too aggressive, or, you know, he's throwing it out, and he's just mistiming his abilities. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because he needs to be the playmaker for his team. Well, I guess if you're life still and you don't want to deal with the Ursa in lane, you just become a Sater instead. So he's kind of running around, throwing out the uh, the orbs. Do you have SCC with Kaka going to make a rotation up to this top lane? I like this a lot. So they're going to be able to put pressure on this life still. They probably won't kill him since he's inside a Sater. But uh, they will at least pick up that one support kill and quickly turn it into a tier 1 tower push. Drascal, I think that's exactly what you wanted out of you. More or less, yeah. I, th I think this is great. You know, they're timing it with the catapult. They got the double wave and everything. 
It's not going to be any contention whatsoever. Bottom lane, they might lose KP here. KP runs forward, positions himself for an echo slam, but he goes. That's not going to be enough damage to kill either one of us, so he holds on to it. This is definitely better for Newbie, though. Even losing KP, it's a bit of a bummer, but because they push so fast, they're already making their way towards mid. Like, they're going to get extra damage on this tier 1. They're going to end up trading two tier 1s for the single tier 1 that Execration themselves will be taking. These are the types of trades you want. Yeah, and this offlane tower is like, it's not the most important tier 1, right? That definitely lies in uh, the middle tower that SEC just took. So, it's uh, a lot of wins from this movement for Newbie. A lot of items coming in. We have the Midas finished up for the Enigma. Uh, relatively good timing, 12 minutes here with the Arcane Boots. Uh, he's just got to speed his way quickly to the Blink Dagger. The worst thing you can do with the Enigma is be a little bit slow on the hand of Midas and then just be a bit too... A couple minutes behind on your Blink and your BKB. As we talked about, this is a slower hero. And Newbie are going to be picking up the pace quite a lot. Especially now that they have the Aegis. Yeah, the, the, the Roshan is huge. This is the Ursa Classic. You know, you want Roshan pretty much every time it's up if you're playing the hero. And the, the biggest problem okay, here we Black go. Hole on to Mookie, but he is going to have the time to throw out the enrage, it looks like, on this first life. He's pretty low. Raging Potatoes really just hoping to be able to survive this range, and his Eidolons will manage to take that kill. KP, he does see Raging oh Potatoes to the last God. second. He gets out the Fisher. Raging Potatoes like, all right, I traded my life for the Aegis. I'm going to throw out my Eidolons, see if I can get some extra CS, but... That is very worth it, though. I mean, it looks kind of weird to commit a Black Hole to an Aegis, but if you think about it this way, the, the Ursa wants the Aegis to be able to push. Yeah. That's the whole point, is you get the Roshan, you go get an objective with it, you take a team fight, you can spread. They're going to find Kaka. Kaka. That's going to be a smoke break. They just kind of pieced it together. Ice Shards and uh, Orb feels him. But if they stick around, their push on the top lane may actually be met with some resistance from Newbie. They're got a three-man smoke from bottom all the way through up the top lane. I'm guessing Mookie's going to TP in. Though he doesn't they got blink. for 15 seconds. There's so. Blink on KP, though. This could be a juicy echo. Oh, it's looking real good. He's going to come in. Two-man echo slam. He's going to be able to get the Fisher off. Great reaction from RR to try and slow down KP, but he still gets off enough of a combination to finish those two off. And now RR, he's also going to die to Newbie's rotation. Great setup. Execrations. James is the only one to be able to survive. He's away. Actually cancels. I mean, it looks like he's going to cut one more wave instead of uh, rotating to mid or something. Maybe that was an accidental cancel. I'm not, I'm not sure about the cancel, but it, it, it's one of those situations that just happened where you have wards down on the enemy side of the map for Execration, and you feel safe. You're like, oh, yeah, they're not coming up here. Sick. And then you forget that, you know, Smoke and Deceit is a thing, and they just beelined it all the way from the other side of the map. Smoke ran straight up, and they just didn't quite grasp the timing that that gank would hit them and obviously the reveal of the blink dagger was perfect like that's the that's the exact fight you want when you first get your blink yeah it's a pretty fast blink dagger too well he did start in the safe lane and yeah, then i true. think he he left a little bit later on um, to the off lane when they decided that they wanted uh, moogie to get a little bit more of the farm priority but Nonetheless, you know, Newbie are getting the incremental advantages that they want with this Ursa lineup. You just, you kind of want to be playing from ahead all the time. And the longer the game goes, you know, we keep coming back to Raging Potato and his importance in the game. But I think it's important that people understand just how difficult it is to play against Blink, BKB, Enigma when you don't have interrupts. Yep. Every single initiation, no matter how good it is, could actually be your downfall. Lumic in some trouble here. Uh, gonna be caught by KP middle as well. SCC. All right, they managed to get Kaka, and we'll get some damage on this tier one tower. Mugi, meanwhile, he'll he'll come over and protect the tower and stuff, but he's actually really close to his blink dagger, which will be huge uh, between the two of them. Kaka, actually three of them, I guess. Kaka, Mirror Shaker, P, and East Ursa. They're gonna have a lot of initiation openings. This is this is the the hardest part of the game for execration, right? Where you don't actually have the huge threat of BKB black hole. Maybe you have blink, but that's again again so many stuns. It's not going to be too big. And the enemy team has all their mobility items to initiate on. It's going to be really chaotic fights. I think that's what what's most likely going to happen. There's going to be blink puck with the life stealer. Tusk has stuns, you know, the Blink Black Hole, the Blink Epis, the Echo Slams. The fights are going to get super, super crazy really fast because I don't think Newbie want to back off. Yeah, in fact, they go ahead and smoke up again. Yeah, absolutely. 
I think they're just gonna hit and hit and hit Execration. And if they bloody them enough, it may be just an early submission. But if Execration can survive through these rotations, as Nando oh. does, great rage! That was perfect. The smoke pops and Nando doesn't waste a quarter of a second. He instantly pops that rage and dodge the Echo Slam initiation. That's really big, like not giving them the opportunity for a pick. Finding Nando would have been great for them. He's also got a Midas, so he's being as effective as he can throughout the map. They know Echo is down, so what do they do? Immediate infest smoke. James is ready to go with his Blink Dagger coil. Their deep wards are still down too, so they, they see S Triple C and they saw KP as well. Yeah, they, they know that this hero is alone top if Moogie stays. And if they could actually get the pick onto this hero, they could just turn it into a tower as All well. Right, he's but it's like Newbie have read kind of the same thing, which is hey, they're off map and we used Echo Slam. It'd probably be a good time for them to try and get aggressive. Bottom lane, Konka's actually got a nice little setup here. He's got the Blink Dagger ready to go. Level and Epicenter, though. I'm pretty sure he can't kill Raging Potato. It's actually pretty close. If he gets one more person, he can definitely kill. Yeah, that's uh, what he's waiting on. See, going to make the wrap around here. Actually, not even going to be using the Epicenter. Looks like they're just going to go for the stun from SCC. And pop goes. Another trade here is Execration in the meantime, pushing top. They might get a little bit of damage dealt bottom. Uh, SCCC does have a double damage, so if they want to stay here and punch this, they definitely can. Now, the Life Stealer does not have Infest, though, so fighting this in the bottom lane, I think, for Execration, especially considering Raging Potato's dead, probably not something on their list of things to do. Looking for potential initiation on James, but it's real hard to dive a puck. Yeah, he's going to try and wrap behind the Tier 2 tower where there isn't vision, but James already backed up, so he just instantly kills the Creep Wave. Well, uh, apparently back to our protection wasn't up there, but it's up Glyph going to be used just to buy some time. I, I'm assuming that Execration will skip this up. I, I really don't think that if you're in their position, you don't fight newbie unless you're going for like a smoke gank pick. That's right. Yeah, and if you know that you're fighting into multiple ultimates, that's also a bit of a deterrent, I think, is Execration, because until BKBs are out, uh, for the Enigma at least, it's really, really tricky to even think about getting a black hole, because KP can just wait. That's the great thing about Newbie's lineup prior to BKBs, is that the Earthshaker can just stay out of the fight as long as he wants, because they will need the black hole to win the fight. Newbie might not necessarily need an Echo Slam, though. Now, Execration were able to keep their tier two alive, and that's because Newbie actually backed away, or at least one member did, the Dragon Knight. So they can see this, so you can see the neutral sitting there, actually gonna be able to catch Mookie here. They managed to get the silence onto him, but there's no follow-up damage. James just holds on, left-hand side. They do manage to catch KP, but it's Kako who makes the initiation with the epicenter. Lubick is now stuck right next to Mookie, not where you want to be against an angry bear, and KP takes the rest. He's gonna be able to chase down the Rubick, while it looks like Lumik. Some sort of ice shards, TP play, not possible. Not against Kaka. We'll end up going down. So all three of the members of Execration end up dying. Looks like Newbie's patience finally won out in the end. They've been kind of sitting down here, hiding away in the trees for a very long time while Dragonite pushed out top and rewarded with a great team play. They didn't want to commit to the Ursa. That was the... I think where the fight kind of went south for Execration. They coil this Ursa and he's sitting there. He hasn't popped his Enrage. And Moogie's just like, okay, I got like 60% health. If you guys commit to me, I'll pop my ult. That buys time. Kaka sees the opportunity for the epicenter counter initiation. And not only that, but Faith was also just sitting behind the trees waiting to grave. So even though it looked like Moogie got caught, it was more of a bait than anything else. And then obviously KP comes in after the fact with the... Uh, with all his spells. He didn't even have to connect with there. It was just straight up damage. Newbie are just completely outmaneuvering Execration at this point in time. Because yeah. then they make that play at bottom, so the Enigma... Oh, now they're making a play for bottom lane still. They're going for Nando, but what a beautiful steal from R. He managed to get the two-man Burrow Strike. That's going to turn this whole entire fight around. They managed to get one kill. Kaka with a Shallow Grave survives a little bit longer, but he will end up dying to the Infest Bomb. The pop out. James catches fate as well. They cut down three. All right, newbie. Just as I was praising you for completely outmaneuvering Execration, and they were. Looks like they got a little greedy and still tried to make a play. They made a play bottom, then top, then bottom immediately. And that's just, that's a little too fast, maybe. They're probably overestimating their individual hero strength a little bit too much. They had Echo there, so maybe they were feeling like, hey, if they try to commit again, we still have our Dazzle. I think, unfortunately, Faith misclicked. I think he graved the wrong person. He graved Kaka instead of KP. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm not sure if that would have made much of a difference in, you know, letting him live or whatever, but yeah, that was a little bit of a little bit of a mistake and ends up costing them. The important thing to note too is even though, you know, Nubi were getting those kills, Raging Potato and Nando both have been doing a really good job at staying in different parts of the map and just continually getting farm. So the first time they went bottom with the three heroes, it was the Puck, the Tusk, and the Rubik, probably the ones that matter the least in regards to net worth. So I'm okay with them losing you know, a support or two, maybe even losing their mid player every now and then if the Enigma is getting closer to his BKB and, and as long as Nando's farming. Right. I guess yeah, that's where you would say Raging Potato maybe, like he felt pressured, right? Losing those three here at bottom, losing a fight, he's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push out top, right? Like, okay, they're bottom lane, I go push out top, but he's really gotta be careful of this Dragonite and the solo kill potential, even just the setup for his team. Uh, comes with this shadow blade you can see he learned his lesson he's going to be playing this push a lot safer he's going to be playing a lot inside the trees allowing the eidolons to do do all the pushing because he's so close to that bkb and this is such an important timing because this is also one of the big peaks of the newbie lineup i would say is that they're about to get to their full strength and then it just comes down to whether or not execution can stop them with mostly with the black hole i feel like most of these other members the, you know, the Life Stealer and the Puck, they're going to have a much harder time, especially with BKBs coming. RR, he is going to be blown up. It's going to be support for support there, but Mookie's in an awkward position. Fortunately, he's got SCC by his side, so there's no way Execration going to fight this one out. RR has been really good about getting Burrow. I think he's gotten it like two or three times this game. Yeah, that's... It's, it's a pretty hard steal, to be honest, but it's a, it's a fantastic spell to have. Burrow, in my opinion, is Rubik. is one of the best non-ultimate spells you can get. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been for probably like a, a year. I remember like we saw TI6, Rebeaks were constantly picked up against the Sand King simply because it was considered such a, a strong counter. Being able to steal that Burrow strike. And no Roshan coming out here from Newbie either. Um, I guess they're probably just waiting out. Well, Echo's back up. Faith will be alive now. He can just TP in. Kaka trying to take the hard farm here. The top lane is going to be caught. Oh, maybe not, actually. Lumic blinks forward, but the Infest Bomb has already come out. They do manage to get the slow, so Kaka is not going to make it all alive. But in the meantime, they manage to catch James, which is more important. They manage to take the more away from Execration. And it doesn't look like Execration is feeling too comfortable about contesting this one. Still going to try, though. The Nimbus doesn't quite have that BKB. Oh, what a big timing this would have been if he had just an extra 200 gold. Maybe they would actually be able to fight this a bit better. A bit more head on. Instead, Execration back to play this a little bit slower. They managed to be Link in. They grabbed the cheese, but not the Aegis. Mookie managed to grab the important item. And now for the Snowball out from the Tusk. Or not, actually. He's hitting SCC, so he's not going anywhere. Still going to be caught. Execration attempt to contest there, but just end up losing two more heroes. Uh, that was a really nice attempt, though, nonetheless, from Raging Potato. He got the the cheese, so sometimes they, they drop pretty close to each other. And yeah. when you're in the moment, you know, you're just spam clicking the ground. You're like, please give me the Aegis, please give me the Aegis. And I think he probably would have died twice anyway, because he had to blink in, right? So he doesn't have the blink back out when right. he respawns. Do you think that Execration had to contest? Uh, I think taking the cheese away is probably good enough. I mean, sure, losing the two heroes is not ideal, but if Raging Potato sacrifices himself and he gets one of the pieces, it's probably still fine because, you know, are they pushing high ground before he gets BKB is my one question. If they were pushing a tier three and then that resulting fight were to make them lose racks, I'd say no, definitely not worth it. But if he's still allowed to get BKB before the next real push comes out from Newbie, then I think it's okay. And it looks like he will get it. Picks up the recipe and newbie. They're still playing this like pretty. I, I would say see a, a bit slow. I mean, yeah. That's probably okay. They're trying to get their BKBs up. I guess if you if you look at it in that regard, if you're operating on your BKBs and you get in rage off at the right times, you may not actually die in that black at all, right? Because a lot of it's magic damage, and then the other half is going to be life stealer and what he can do. But Dragonite's got high armor, and Ursa's got the enrage. There's definitely also consideration of the Tezzle, like Faith having the, the weaver. Oh, they're going to make the initiation here, just go for the straight up wow. kill on SEC. Now KP is around, he managed to make the TP into the shrine, so he can attempt to counter this in execration. Get a little too grouped up, and there it is. He goes for it, only hits two though, the BKB was still up on the Enigma, but it's good enough as Mookie makes his initiation follow up, managed to kill the Life Stealer, takes down the Ursa, James manages to actually pick up that one support kill, and it looks like he'll get away with a well-timed haste rune. Now, 
Raging Potato with four seconds up. Kaka misses the Burrow Strike, needs a right click in desperately as the Blink Dagger is going to come up, but he gets the Old Scepter. Managed to get the vision there. Raging Potato will be caught, and uh, I don't think he makes it out here. Between the Burrow Strike and the Caustic Finale, keep him slowed down. Mookie will actually take the kill there. Monster Kill Streak for him, 15 to 25, and the first reveal of the BKB Black Hole, but it was not good enough for Execration to win the fight. They had a really nice idea of, okay, the DK is sitting in front, we got a little time, let's just go ahead and drop a black hole on him and we'll take 45. It sounds really good on paper, but I think with this style of lineup, what needs to happen is you kind of want Newbie to be engaging into you, because they have two heroes that are great at just sitting out of the fight. Right. They have Kaka on the, the Sand King, and then you have KP Shaker. In addition, you also have Faith, who had he been maybe a little bit closer, you know, maybe they don't even kill s -C, but. Because of that, they can sit back and they can also line up their own Echo and Epi as well. Off of a black hole. Right. Fisher initiation, Nando is dead. She just like that. 50 seconds on the clock and Newbie will push for high ground. That is real bad news for Execration. Yeah, especially since there's no black hole up for 70 seconds between the two. You basically have two cores out of the fight right now. You don't have a black hole. James actually doesn't have his Lincoln, so he can't even play that aggressive into Newbie. It's SEC with that instance. And well, the Burrow Strike kind of dangerous. He does make an initiation here from Kaka. They managed to get the Lincoln Snowball, but only by some pittance of time, though, as KP follows that Snowball up with a Chan Totem Stunt on the two. And James watches it all, unable to do anything. Maybe get a small stun on KP, but he's able to get out. SEC pops his BKB, man fights for his team to be able to back away. And are they really going to go back into this? Whistler's coming back up. RR makes his stun. Okay, that's a little far. Fisher block, and he's definitely dead. Nando's here now, and they hold as three against Newbie. Looks like the tier three will stay alive. But maybe they can keep the barracks up. Rage rack to be sorry. KP makes the echo slip barely onto Nando, but it's good enough for Moogie to get the fall in damage. Now it's just a control game. Newbie definitely are going to be able to take this mid laner, Brax. If not more, potentially going to rotate and take some tier two. He's a little low and he will lose his Aegis. Coming back though, full HP, full mana. Melee Rax will fall and Newbie rotate to uh, bottom lane if they wish. Take that tier two or maybe just back up and farm. Well, they know Black Hole's up soon, so yeah, that's true. it's probably safer just to back off, take your win. Go get your farm, heal up, buy your items, stuff like that. Come back with just a little bit more punching power the next time because you're going to be fighting into essentially the full arsenal of Execration. And that that Black Hole on DK mid definitely came back to bite them yeah. because the fight itself, they didn't even win off of killing SCCC. And because the Black Hole was down and, and Newbie were holding onto his smoke, they're able to just very easily get across the map. They didn't, uh, they committed an Echo, I think and a epi to the fight mid, but it's not as important for them to have those abilities as it is for Execration just to have Black Hole. Right. That ability is so paramount. They last picked Enigma. If the hero doesn't come in huge, then their team fight, in comparison to what Newbie have right now, is just lackluster. So I'm, I'm feeling like it might be a little bit too much in regards of like net worth and experience lead now for Execration to do anything but try to get like a three or four man black hole if they want to win a fight. Right. And in this case, like, if Execration is the ones setting up a fight. And not TPing. Might want to TP friend for uh, certain situations, but he's okay. Uh, in these situations, say we look back on that, that Dragonite. Do you think the, the better way to set it up for Execration is that they go for this Infest situation and that's their form of initiation onto a hero? Even if it's going to be slower in damage, they may not be able to burst down a hero. That's their form of initiation and they hold the, their black hole and wait for Newbie's counter initiation. I think that's the perfect way to fight. But you have to be able to do enough damage to force Newbie to react. You know, that's yeah. the thing. You have to force either KP in or you have to force Kaka to go in. Then you can black hole. If you wait, I think you can win. Smoke is going to pop here, SEC. Two has the vision down. There goes BKB Black Hole, but only catches KP. That's not really great, especially with the Shalgrave still there. KP is going to be able to get off some sort of abilities. Sounds up for a little while, gets to the trees. Is going to be popped by the coil. James, though, he's the only one left alive. His whole entire team pretty much crumpled under Moogie's weight of the big bad bear. 
James not even going to make it out. His uh, Lincolns is down, so he's caught by the Yule Scepter. Ah, Nubi, you're going to give it up. It's like, ah, it's too hard to kill that hero. Let's just go for that tier two. After all, it is 40 seconds on the clock for an Enigma and 65 seconds for the Black Hole. I do feel as if Raging Potato is, he's playing a little bit anxious, I guess is the best way to describe it. He's going in really fast, he's hes looking at heroes who we feel have big team fight impact, and he says, I'm going to try to stop you from using your spells. But do we have a really good team if you're only getting a black hole in like one or two people? Right. As we just saw there, Faith got the grave, he lived through pretty much everything, he only died at the very end once uh, James dropped a coil on him after the grave wore off. So you commit this BKB black hole, you can't just kill one person. Not when you're this far behind. James, there's a little silence, a little harassment onto Newbie. They've taken the tier three in there. They're happy enough after all. Roshan potential timing starts now. The worst thing you can do as a newbie with this kind of advantage is force another fight in the high ground, somehow lose that, and all of a sudden execration is looking at taking Roshan themselves. There is still potential for turnarounds. That's the beauty of heroes like Enigma. Yeah. If you get the right black hole and you get the midnight. Not around. against KP though. Oh lordy. <laughs> All right. Well, I think he had the he had the the ancient prowler uh, minus armor on him. So, he so just KP goes KP with a double damage just echo slam and chant totem womp took like 75% of his HP. Oh, and then nope. All right, he might be getting saved. Lumic is going to die in his stead, and Newbie with the tier two still up at top lane will take bottom four. See, just poking at the tier fours, thinks better of it. Bottom lane of Rex is better. Well, it looks like we're going to be looking at potentially them just going back and checking Rush again, or are they just going to run straight for the tier two? Right now, it's going to be back door protected. They're going to be able to clean up some of the buildings, just doing some tier four damage, I guess. They need to be careful though, there is PKB Black Hole. It's up in one second. James. You know, I'm looking at this and I think that's part of the beauty of, of Lifestealer Enigma against this lineup that doesn't have anything to really threaten. Uh, oh, they're actually going to TP4. They really want to catch Newbie here. James is in a position to jump on some heroes, but it just looks like a little bit too much. Five heroes are there. He makes a long orb jump away. Wanted to catch somebody for newbie, but it looks like they just stayed a little bit too grouped up for him to find that opening. Dire successful scan onto Raging Potato, so they back away at Shrine. It's very interesting watching this game because on paper, I think that newbie's lineup is a tiny bit better, but it's not so much better where you think that they would win most of the games. Yeah. You, you would assume like every once in a while if you were to play this matchup a lot that the Enigma would come in huge eventually when he has DKB, get the right targets and go in. But the way the fights have just been going, they're not really, like you want your chain of initiation to typically be Puck and Lifestealer, like you said, they go in first. They make newbie do something and then you can get a black hole. But the way the fights have been going, they're going in at the same time or they're going in like Raging Potato goes first. And it's, that's dangerous. It's super, super dangerous. Enigma plays best when he can sit back and wait for his moment. Kaka is going to be found here. Looks like they're going to blow up. Oh, maybe not. He gets off the Yule Scepter. Save himself at half HP. Snowball still being held there on the Faith. Going to be able to kill him for sure. Looks like they caught Nando as well with the Abyssal Blade. They do manage to get the coil out. Moogie is going to just run straight through. Tanks the stun and invest. Leap away and James with KP. He's like, wait, man, let's get the Echo Sam. Hold on to James. They're going to blow up the puck and release the Life Stealer or not. Oh, Blink is. Blocks that bro strike, tries to make the burrow away, but doesn't make it. Nando can't even TP out. Good lord. He has no armor, pretty much, against Moogie. And Moogie has got a ton of damage. By the way, uh, I don't think I've seen Moogie miss a single attack on that life stealer. Yeah, what's with that? Have you, have you <laughs> noticed that as well? Like, he has seriously hit every single swing. Yeah, I actually just clicked on him to check for MKB, because I was like, man, he... He didn't miss anything there. He did it in the base. He did it in like three different fights. And he had the talisman for ages. Like, yeah. I think up until this point, uh, maybe like two or three minutes ago, he still had cheese in his inventory from when they managed to steal it from Roche. But yeah, newbie coming in strong here. Game number one, 26 k network lead here in 35 minutes. Seems okay. Rawr! Well, he canceled that one. And he up. You kind of got a feel for you know, Raging Potato a little bit this game because it is a high pressure Enigma game. Yeah. It's like, oh god, if I don't get the Echo, the game's just gonna fall apart. Because, of, you know, I, I I guess James did okay in his lane. 
and Nando was free farming for a majority of the early game as well. It's just when it came to moving around the map and fighting, Newbie just outclassed them. Like Absolutely. They, they just fought better, they were in the right place at the right time, and their lineup was great. So game one victory for them. Yeah, I think that um, like looking back at the draft a little bit, part of the reason that there is so much pressure on Raging Potato is because they picked that early lifestealer, right? They pick lifestealer and then into Puck, and you're saying, all right, there's our primary damage dealer in the life stealer. You have the rest of the draft to counter it, and they and that's exactly what Nubi did, right? They picked up Dragonite, they picked up Ursa, two cores that are going to sit on the front lines that are just hard for life stealer to actually eat through. So then it's all on Raging Potato to make the the big black hole play to actually win these fights. It's hard to play a life stealer lineup if you can't just instantly kill somebody. I mean, he couldn't really do much of anything this game between yeah. the. The Grave, you have a DK and an Ursa that you can go on, and a Sand King. It's like, ugh, it's not really a good target for him unless the puck gets the silence. Gonna have to wash their hands clean of game number one. Execration head to game number two with a fresh start.